Hey, how's it going today, YouTube? It's Eric Markle again. Uh, doing a tricks and tips video again on uh, how to make a press grill box repeatable. Of course, we're gonna be pressing some uh, mesh like this. And just kind of going over the steps on how to make a press grill box, how to press grill, I'm sorry, how to press your grills uh, effectively and repeatably and some of the tools that you're going to need to do that in a uh, time-saving and efficient way. So uh, of course first you need the actual shape. This is the shape that we'll be uh, making a press out of. You're going to need a quarter inch spiral. It doesn't matter if it's a compression bit like this one, your standard uh, quarter inch spiral. Uh, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a quarter inch spiral uh, doesn't matter and the chamfer bit uh, depending on the type of shape you're trying to get you can use a 45 degree chamfer like this here you can use a 30 degree uh, chamfer 90 um, you know it's kind of up to the material and what bits you have something like this that is a very tight weave there's only so much stress you can get out of this uh, you can heat it up and try to bend it using a really aggressive uh, chamfer bit, but you might have uh, issues with the actual grill mesh breaking or warping and looking kind of crazy. So you do have to know the uh, limits of the grill mesh material that you are using. Uh, also, here I have some uh, metal dowels. That's to uh, keep my box aligned. I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but I have four holes here. These go on here so that when I'm getting ready to do my layers, uh, all the wood goes back flat. So uh, you can use wood dowels. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just know uh, sometimes the wood dowels can uh, break or move and I have uh, never had an issue with the metal dowels breaking. Uh, pencil, pry tool, and an Ulfa knife. So uh, let's get started. All right, so normally when I make my press grill boxes uh, using this particular grill mesh, I'll normally make it out of quarter inch wood. Uh, you can use 3 eighths. Um, I just prefer quarter uh, just for the look. And I know that the quarter inch wood with the uh, press, it won't pretty much tear up this grill mesh. So I can pretty much do any uh, pattern and it's within the limits of this grill mesh. So normally I'll take my main piece, lay it on a piece of quarter, and I'll just kind of trace out the actual pattern. All right. So once I have that pattern, I can move that and I can mark a spot where I need this to begin. So once I have that out, I'll take it over to a drill press and then I'll press out or drill press in using a quarter inch uh, drill bit right here. So that once I'm able to get that, I can load my quarter inch spiral in right here and it's going to be flush. All right, so once our pilot hole is set, we can load that in here. Take our template. Load it against this piece here, get everything lined up, make sure there's flush against it. And push that down. And then now we can turn on our dust collection and route this out and make a copy. All right, so once we're done with that, we are now left with a positive and negative. And now we need to uh, use the chamfer bit from earlier and put a 45 degree chamfer on that.
All right, so now that we have our 45 degree chamfer, we have our extra copies of this panel here. So take a pry tool and take these apart. The easy thing about this is that uh, these pieces here are exact copies of this piece here, just without this. So it's real repeatable. You can just literally take this piece here, stick it on here, use your flush trim bit, and route out the entire piece, and then you have your copy. So next, like I said, this is gonna go on here. And then this would go in here. All right. So this is where your dowels come in handy. Because you can literally just kind of push these in. Get everything nice and centered. And you can make sure your work piece isn't gonna move. So now, like I said, you can take this uh, alignment. Uh, generally, you want to have this spaced out about a quarter around evenly. And then next, you're going to actually tape this down. Well, I tape it. Some people can glue it. You can nail it down. I prefer to uh, tape it. I'll take some of the uh, double-sided tape. And then I will just come and lay down. Uh, I personally, I only use one inch template tape. I don't use a uh, half or uh, anything, you know, smaller, just cause I like having more surface area, uh, less chances of the tape letting go, but that's just a personal preference. It is a little bit more expensive, but I don't mind spending the money without having to worry about making a piece over because um, for whatever reason, it letting go. Because even if you uh, rough cut, you can rough cut and sometimes it will still do some weird things on you. And what I do is I'll have my pry tool, I use the back and push on it to make sure the tape is set. And normally if you push hard enough, when you peel back or when you come back, the tape just kind of lets, lets it go, like right here, you just, and then boom. Give it a amount of pressure, and on your way back, the backing will come off. And then come back, and then grab it, and that's it. So let's move on to the next step, get everything aligned. All right, so Clearly I have way too many quarter inch spirals laying around, but this is one way that I kind of uh, make sure that I have everything centered is uh, I'll use quarter inch spirals and make sure that my actual work piece is uh, centered. So, yep, I'll use that. Make sure, you know, push down on my piece because of tape and I'll just take out all my quarter inch spirals and uh, I mean, there are other ways to do it. I just have a ton of quarter inch spirals at my disposal. So that's just kind of one way I do it. You know, there's no necessarily a right way or wrong way. This is just a little trick that I use. Um, but yeah, so then once that's set, um, we can put the top on and uh, make our way up to the press. All right, so we can pop off the top plate. And here's our beautiful press grill. I mean, super nice, super consistent. Take that off, move our, our jig. And this is what we got. Oh, look at that. Nice, pretty consistent. All the way through. I'm talking about 
Look at that, look at that, look at that. So yeah, I mean, you know, 10 or 15 minutes and that's, you know, what you get. All right, so hopefully today's uh, tips and tricks videos helped out somebody. If you have any other further questions, you can always message me or uh, email me. But yep, yeah, hope you guys liked it. Hope I went in enough detail without making a 30 long, 30 minute long video. But yeah, this is what we got. So as always, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for commenting. And uh, have a blessed day.